Hello and welcome back to our Ultimate Discord bot course. And in this episode, we want to start working on our first game, Rock, Paper, Scissors. Very simple. And for that, let's start with creating Gamecock. So we copy our test and rename it to Games. And we have to obviously change the cock name as well. And we can rename our hello command to rock, paper, scissors, RPS, RPS. Now, for that, we don't want to have arguments like this. And we're going to have an empty string. Cool. Now, the way rock, paper, scissors work is the user chooses either rock, a paper, or scissor, and it is then compared to the other person's choice. And, well, rock beats uh, scissors, and paper beats rock, and scissors beats paper. That's all. And what we want to do is we want to implement this for our users that they can play a round of rock, paper, scissors against the bot. For that, we're going to make use of a few things. We're going to start working on our own converter that when we do expect the argument, let's say user choice, we don't just want it to be a string. We actually want that it's a specific string. It's either a rock, paper, or scissors. Okay, for that, we're gonna build a converter. And we're gonna do that in a bit. We're gonna do some groundwork first. So let's start by defining our, well, choices that the user has. For that, I'm gonna create a new module over here and I'm gonna call it RPS. Since it's a Python module, I also create the init file. Now, there's nothing in there. And we're gonna create a new file and call it model.py. Now in that model, we are going to create a simple class and call it RPS. And we're gonna define rock as rock, paper, as paper and scissor oops scissor as scissor okay and we are then going to go and create our first method in this class and say get choices now, because it's a class, we have to give it self, and all it does is return us a list of, well, our rock, paper, scissors. And for that, we say self.rock, self.paper, and self.scissor. Okay. Now we can, well, we could use this here. But uh, that is not entirely the correct way. We can actually create a converter and we then work with the model that we just created. So simply saying user uh, choice and then, well, whatever, and referring to the model doesn't really work. So let's create a new file over here and call it the parser pile. Now in here, we first of all want to get access to our model RPS. RPS, there we go. Oops, we did a, there we go. Now, we also create a class here and let's call it the rock, paper, scissor uh, converter or parser since we named it the, the file like this. And in there, we need a specific method. So in the constructor, we want to have the user's choice. Now what we do now is we say the choice is first of all, the lower version of it. So if 
the user writes it with a capital R or so, it's all gonna be in lower case. And now we simply check if the choice equals to the RPS rock, then we're gonna set the choice to, well, RPS rock. Oops. The next check is if the choice is RPS paper, and then we set the choice in the parser, oops, getting the R there, to the RPS paper. And we can copy this and do the last thing for scissor as well. Now, in all other cases, we, well, race, yeah, an exception, didn't work. Good. Now, the next thing we do is we go to our games and we now have to use our parser that we just created over here. For that, we have to import. So from RPS parser, import the rock, paper, scissor parser, parser. Okay, we can type that in here. And with that, we can now access the user choice. So let's test this out by calling user choice. Now keep in mind, it is now an instance of our rock, paper, scissor parser. So when we want to access the actual choice, we have to call choice. So let's test this out. I created another text channel and I'm gonna call RPS rock. And we can see we can access the user choice and the rock was correctly resolved. So what if we type in ASD, then please check with the administrators. We did get a converting error, perfect. So we only allow the user choices that we just defined in our model. With that, we can start working because the idea is that the bot also has to make a choice. So how does the bot make a choice? Well, we randomly choose one. Therefore, we use the random module. So I'm gonna import this on the top, import random, and choice expects a list. So we have this list because we have defined our get choices method. So we are going to call this. For that, we first of all have to import from the model our RPS model. Okay, so now what we can say is, hold on, we make a new instance first. So let's say the RPS uh let's say m is rps and now we can say rps m get choices okay we could do this with uh, with a static method but we're going to change the code later on this this was a quick fix um, because i haven't prepared it this way and next we're gonna well, take this out and actually say the user choice equals to the user choice choice. And now we have to compare these two choices. Now we do know the cases, so we can create an object that we're gonna, well, call in a way by choosing the key and then getting the answer. So the idea is to say, okay, the winner check is, if let's say the RPS rock and the RPS uh, paper is provided as a key, as, an, as a list, then we know, okay, the first choice is always the user's choice and the second choice is always the bot choice. In this case, the bot wins, so the user loses and therefore we're gonna return false, right? Paper beats rock. Now with that, we're gonna create the other cases and say, okay, the rock wins against the scissor, so the user has won. Now, when we do this for paper and 
the bot chose rock, therefore the user won. Now paper plays scissor and the bot wins, therefore the user loses. And lastly, for the scissor as well, we're going to compare it to rock and then to paper. So in this case against rock, the user loses and against paper, the user wins. Now, the next thing we can do is say, okay, the one check, so to speak, the result of it is uh, none. And now we check if the bot choice is equal to the user choice. If that is the case, we can say that one is none. Okay, let's let's change this. Well, we don't need to change it, but let's go on. Else, there's a difference, so we have to check it. So we say one is the winner check that we just created, and we're gonna choose now the well the property where the user choice and the bot choice is. Now with that, we now get back either false or true. Last thing, since we have the result in our one variable, we can check if one is none. We can say the message that we want to print out or send back to the user, so let's put the message in here, is uh, it's a draw. Okay, elif one is true. We say message you win and let's put in the actual game well choices where we say okay this is the user choice and then against the bot choice and we're going to copy this one more time and say one. If one is false, then we say you lose and return this as well. Now let's test it out. What happens? And I'm going to say I'm going to choose rock. It's a draw. So let's try paper instead. I lose because the bot chose scissor, so we're also gonna choose scissor now. Uh, it's a draw again. Let me try rock. Again a draw. Let's try rock one more time. Yes, finally I won. Perfect. So with that we have the game in place and we cannot type in anything else because that doesn't really work with our parser. If I don't type anything else, again, uh, argument is required. But let's have a look at one more thing, and that's when we type in help, we now see the games module and the RPS command. So if I inspect the RPS command a bit further, we see RPS user choice. Okay, that's cool. But let's say, when I type in RPS without anything, I want to default to rock because we want to work here with the rock, paper, scissors. I now have to specify the default. Now I can't simply say rock. If I do that, let's check it out. We can see the string has no attribute choice because, well, we are expecting actually an instance of the rock paper scissor parser class and for that we simply are going to create a new instance of this model and we defaulted to rps rock so let's try this again if I type in RPS 
and we see, okay, I have chosen rock automatically and that works. But if we type in the help command again, we now see something really ugly. And for that, we're gonna look into And for this, we are going to look into, no. Now this is really ugly and we want to actually change this. So let's have a look into a different way of defining the help messages. Now we have looked in earlier episodes how to write the brief, the description, etc. We can also do that by using multi-line comments. So let's say, well, the command uh, play a game of rock, paper, scissors and see what happens. Now, if I type in help, I can now see that RPS has my comment that I just wrote play a game of rock, paper, scissors. If I type in help RPS, I can see that it's also underneath here, but we still have the ugly uh, instance. Now, if we go a bit further and say, okay, either choose rock, paper, or scissor, and beat the bot, okay? Let's see what difference that makes. So I type in again, help, and this doesn't show up. Okay, so does it show up when I inspect the command self? Yes. However, no matter how many more lines I write here, yeah, you cannot challenge another user. Uh, it's you versus the bot only. And check the command help again. I still can't take care of this. However, what I can do is I can go back to our command coroutine and say usage and say, okay, rock, paper, scissor. I save that. And now when I have a look at the RPS command, I can see that the default has been removed and that the RPS command is still automatically generated in here, but the usage is now appended after it. And we removed our well, Python model print that is shown there. Okay, let's look how we can improve this because with a few more games, this is gonna be a really long file and the way this is structured is not very nice. Let's do that in the next episode. <music>